Hello everyone and welcome to Action RPG Build Guide Edition. Today I'm ready to drop on you my new Automancer I've been working on for the last week and I am so happy with the results, so excited to share them with you today. As always, I will cover every single facet of the build. Everything is timestamped in the description below if you need to bounce around. Let's not waste any time and jump right into this. Now for this build, we're actually gonna start off at the training dummy because there's a little more to explain even though everything is automated. It's just very different than what you are probably used to. Now, the skills we're using for this build are Transplant, Sacrifice, Infernal Shade, Summon Volatile Zombie, and Rip Blood. And Rip Blood, we're literally just using this to keep our mana positive and to give us survivability with some more generation. As you can see, my bar going up and then transplant is our movement and helps keeps us alive. Now for the point in this demonstration, I am going to put transplant in the spot for all of my skills to show you that this is an automated build. Now, all I am going to do is tell my minions to attack this dummy and I'm going to be casting rip blood and to start this process, I'm gonna use a potion, okay? Are you ready for this? Here we go. Now, all I am doing is pushing A on the training dummy and casting Rip Blood. You will notice my skills, all four are traversal skills, and there is nothing going off right now. All I'm doing is casting Rip Blood, generating over 2,000 ward and keeping my mana positive now just starting off as of right now we're at 250 armor shred stacks and our and our bleed stacks are over 500 with over 50 on poison now let's say i wanted to pop another potion potion popped and now we are moving higher we're now over 600 400 and 100 now let's say, Aaron, I want to pop another potion. Well, we still got two left. No problem, popped. And now we're running out of space for enemies to hit the dummy, but now our armor shred stacks are at 500 and our bleed is over nine and poison is still at 100. And then we will pop our final potion. I don't think there's enough space for anyone to get in there. But it looks like we topped out about 900 stacks of bleed through automation. Pull them off. We're doing about 350,000 damage per second just from our stacks of damage over time. And this whole thing is automated. Now, the way it works, okay, is very simple. Our summon volatile zombie. Every single time they blow up, they are going to cast Sacrifice. And Sacrifice is going to give us a Blood Spectre every single time, as long as you have positive mana. On top of that, our Summon Volatile Zombie is also going to cast Infernal Shade 50% of the time. And Infernal Shade is going to reattach after the target dies. So it just keeps bouncing around other minions. On top of that, we are still using our cycle rings, which means the zombies just pop up over and over and over again to start the process. And since the new experimental affix allows you to summon volatile zombies on a potion use, anytime you need a huge boost of damage, you will get that through popping a potion, which means you don't need to keep any of the skills on your skill bar. Zombies auto-populate, which blow up to sacrifice a minion, which creates blood rates, which make infernal shades, which reattach to other minions, and the cycle continues. The damage on this is crazy. Check out this fight. This is a Shade of Oribus at 220. Oh, the damage output perspective doing pretty good. And we have kill threshold. Oh, 
That was really fast. Let me show you how to recreate this build. So now let's check out the skills for our Automancer Blood Spectre and pay attention to the order in which I take the nodes. That's the order you want to grab them as well. You actually want to go to the right first, two points into Fervor, one point into Leap Attack, three into Grand Sacrifice. Now to be clear, the more points you put into Grand Sacrifice, the more blood wraiths you're going to make. On top of that, the more mana you are going to consume. So if you find yourself always at negative mana, pull points out. If you find yourself always at positive mana, put points in. You just got to find that happy median. And for me, it was three points. You then want to go down one into Path of Destruction, one into Necromantic Fervor and two into Effigy. And this is where you're going to cast your Infernal Shade. Again, you actually don't need uh, four points in here because the shades, once they attach, they bounce between minions. So they're always up and you really don't have to worry about auto casting it. You could maybe even keep one point in it, but I liked making sure I had five up. So I left two. You then want to come up and you want forceful commander and then to the left two into grave attunement and one into giant zombie. Mana cost for your zombies is nothing when they're auto cast. So you don't have to worry about the added mana cost. You then one want into you want one into blast, one into horde, two into vile force, more corpse parasites, more hits, more stacks of bleed, armor, shred, and poison. Then to the right, one into ravenous, two into pull of the grave. This is your kill threshold for the build. And since you have infinite zombies, it's just great. Basically, you only got to take out 84% of the enemy's life. Now, stay on let's stay on zombie for just a second. There's currently a bug where vomiting and leaping do not work in conjunction. So don't try and put points into vomit. It will not work. The zombies will just jump and drive you crazy. Now, I used to have as many as 28 points into zombie, and I've pulled a lot of that out as I've been specking my gear. If you have more points into zombie, the first two, you want one right here in the necromantic fervor and one into vital ward just gives you some more generation from your zombies. And if you have plus three points, you want one here, one here, and one here. So just giving you a little bit of advice because it's easy to get a lot of skill points to zombie. Moving over to Infernal Shade. For Infernal Shade, you want to go up into the right first. Three into Influence, one into Flames, one into Trail, one into Sub, one into Soul Fire, and three into Manic. These are all minion buffs. So you're getting huge movement damage, haste, frenzy, to, for these stacks on your minions, which is great. Then you come down here. This is how you reattach them. Three points into Crackling Flames or into Shifting Doom. Then we want to get an extra shade. So we have five. This is in Flight of Fire. And then your last two points is going to make it where they're going to put in slow chance on all of their enemies. Absolutely amazing skill. You never have to cast it and it will always be up. Moving over to Sacrifice, you want to come down first. Two into Pontifex, one into Blood Spectre, four into From the Blood, one into Whor. This makes it where every Sacrifice always makes a large Blood Spectre. That's why they're so huge looking compared to regular Wraiths. You then want five into Blood Weaver, three into Hamo, and then to the left. And these points, I don't want to say they're wasted but they're wasted basically one into altar two into burning offering and then i just put one point here to bring down mana efficiency if i had more points i would just continue to stack mana efficiency moving over to transplant you want to go to the left first one into fleeting form three into anemia three into bone armor three into apo two into plated bone this is going to give you survivability and less damage taken over time. Damage reduction is huge to stay alive. Then one into Seamooth, one into Purga Purgatory, and three into Ivory Court, which I know you can't see. Now, the reason why you want to make bone minions is because you need minions to sacrifice to make blood specters. So these little bone minions only last a second because basically they are converted to blood specters last but not least moving over to rip blood you want to go to the right first you want two into arcane absorption one into rip spirit one into arcane fortress this makes it where you generate ward then you want three into hemo three into thirst five into quenching three into mana feast one into morrow drinker and one into hemo 
Now, this is what's going to get you your ward back. You're going to be getting nine mana back literally every half a second. But still, you have to be constantly casting it. It's going to give you your survivability. It's going to keep you a positive mana. And it's what in return is going to give you a ton of blood specters. Those are the skills. Moving over to our passives. And right now, our Automancer is level 100. And I've changed these passives so many times. But I do feel like they are in their final resting place. At least for now. 8 into Forbidden Knowledge, 10 into Man of Mortality, 5 into Dark Rituals, 8 into Stolen Vitality, 1 into Crimson, 1 into Soul Aegis, and then 6 into Veins of Power. Yes, we have 39 points into the base tree because we are really trying to work on survivability as a Necromancer. That's why we have Mana of Mortality. Moving over to Necro. 7 into Elixir of Hunger, 8 into Risen Army, 3 into Cursed Blood, 5 into Reclamation of Souls, 8 into Aegis Fall. This is where we're getting those 500 stacks of minion armor shred. 2 into Dark Retribution. This one is also important because just like making those bone minions in, in uh, Transplant, we need Vanguards to also turn into Blood Specters. So know that just the little minions that you get for free, keep those in mind that those are technically Blood Specters. Then 5 into Frantic Summons, 10 into Rotting Army, and this is something that I changed kind of last minute and through testing I really liked. You can get as high as 100 stacks of poison on a boss you are fighting. And even though this isn't a poison build, it's a bleed build, we still have a ton of damage over time, which just gives us way more damage. So just that 70% minion melee chance for poison gives you almost 100 stacks of poison. Last but not least, moving over to the Lich, 10 into Apo, 8 into Serrated Bones, bleed chance, and then Desolation, more minion damage over time. That is the passives. Moving over to everyone's favorite gear, starting with idols. Now, just like my last Necro build, the idols basically have not changed. As much life as you can possibly get out of your idols you want, with one affix on one idol being minion chance to apply mark of death on hit. Get even if it's 3%, which is the base, which is what this is. That's all you need. Just get one idol that has it and the rest stack life. Okay. Moving over to our gear. Now I am using a lot of uniques for this build. And technically there are two required uniques. I don't like having builds that require them. And technically this does have it. And I don't want to say, you know what, it's actually, I'm changing it right now. They're technically not required, but if you didn't have two cycle rings, then your zombies wouldn't auto summon, which means you would have to summon them yourself on your skill bar, which kind of takes away the whole auto mancer vibe. So if you want it to be auto mancer, you need to have two rings. Okay, you get the point. We are also using Tull Armor. And in its base form, I probably wouldn't use this, but this is a low level, level five unique. And ours had two legendary potential. We were able to move over physical minion leech, keep our minions alive longer, and physical penetration with bleed affected, effect inflicted on minions, which is awesome. But we're using Toll Armor with Raven's Rise with two cycle rings. And of course, if you want to see true end game, Check out the advanced build planner in the description. All right, here we go. Helmet. I put this on because I needed a boost to survivability. Amulet. Catalyst. Weapon. Felt. Experimental affix. Volatile zombies summoned on potion. Get this affix. It's not that hard to get. Relic. And boots. That is the gear. Now let's check out the character stats for our Automancer. Like I said, level 100, intelligence 53, vitality 18, movement speed 34. As far as resistances go, yes, they obviously can be better. Void necrotic poison and physical feel good. Cold and fire are okay. And what we need is a boost to lightning. So just spread out a little bit of the Necrotic in the Void and we should be fine. Armor is low, but this does get a boost every single time we use Transplant. So you'll see it really goes up to 16%, and that's where you're going to be sitting most of the time. 
Ward retention 322. Endurance almost maxed at 58% with endurance threshold at 650. This is really great. Really helps keep us alive. And then crit avoidance, I need it on one affix. I'm hoping I could find some of these rings with legendary potential and try and get crit avoidance on it. Now, when you're looking at your minion damage, our overall minion damage is 585, which filters down. Melees at 700, physicals at 639. And then the one we really want is right here, increase minion damage over time at 823. Really, really good. Again, this is damage over time, not crit. And even though our increased minion health is only 199, which is very low, these are temporary minions. And inside of their own skill trees, they have a big boost to their health. So this is an anaphyx you have to focus on. Aaron, this is great, but how do I stay alive? Good question. We're going to talk about sustain. And now looking inside of our skill tree again, if you have some volatile zombie and you have more points than me, Take these two right here. They will give you a little boost to your ward. But really, Transplant is going to give us our damage, less damage taken. And then Rip Blood is going to give us up to 2,500 ward really from this skill. On top of that, inside of our passives, I have two nodes that I normally never take. But now that we're pushing 250 corruption, getting towards that 300, we need more survivability. So mana of mortality, mania of mortality. Whenever a nearby enemy ally or minion dies, you have a 10% chance to gain 130 ward. And then inside of Necromancer, you have Reclamation of Souls. You have increased ward retention and are granted ward whenever one of your minions die. Now our zombies are dying. I mean, legitimately in the background while I'm recording this. Like when they're in combat, they're dying every second and you're making blood wraiths every second and your vanguards are dying every second and your bone minions are dying every second. So your minions are dying all the time, which also gives you a boost to your ward. So those two nodes with using rip blood is kind of the best way for survivability. And then, of course, you need to use your core sustain, which is your endurance crit avoidance and resistances. And then of course, you know, stack life. Right now I'd like to be at 3000, but we're at 2500. And for the most part, we do pretty good when it comes to sustain. Last but not least, let's talk about leveling. Aaron, this is great. How do I take it from level one to level 100? What I see on screen right now? Another good question. The first skill you want to take is summon skeleton. And what you actually want to do is go to the left first and take mightier than the sword to remove warriors. So then you can come down here and take extra archer damage. So all you take is your little bone minions picking people off. The second skill you want to take is summon volatile zombie. And you want to come up first and grab this node pull of the grave. So you have kill threshold while you are traversing the campaign makes it way easier, especially on campaign bosses. So you've got your permanent skeletons that are shooting and you've got your zombies that you are casting all the time. The second or the third skill you want to take is summon bone golem and you want to come down here and take tower of bones and then take fragments of the fallen so that it is your meat shield and it, it absorbs all that threat so the enemies are fighting the golem and not you. Now, transplant you want to put on your bar in an unspecced form, which means you still get a movement speed, you still have a permanent golem, you still have permanent archers, and then you your main summon is your volatile zombie. That right there will get you to the entire campaign, through the entire campaign. And if you want to take it one step further, once you unlock Necromancer, and you get Summon Skeletal Mage. You could switch out Summon Skeleton, put in Skeletal Mage, and then these will just be the, this will just be your ranged spell minions, and they just do a lot more damage than Skeletons. That is how you level up. All right, everyone, that's the build guide. What do you think of my new Automancer Blood Specters? Or something I missed? Is there something I could do to take this to the next level? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Two asks at the end of the video. Ask number one, I'm hoping today is the day I have earned your subscription. I'm hoping today is the day you make the decision to push that little red button. I would really appreciate it, but of course, only if you think I've earned it. And if I haven't earned it, I'm gonna work harder for you. 
ask number two check out my patreon thank you to the first 80 members that have signed up i get asked all the time aaron what's the best way to support and patreon is it and you get the most added benefits including access to the vip lounge where we could chit chat every day access to the bonus hour of the podcast access to the live stream with me audio and video so many goodies patreon is the way first link in the description that's all i've got hopefully you were entertained or at least learned something aaron out